Today, we have another edition of the Gurkha. This is slowly getting more emptier. The only thing that'll be left in this box is the La Artista one from Gurkha. Today, we're going to go for Gurkha by Oscar Veladares. All right. Again, give him information about the cigar. All the MSRPs of these Gurkha Year of the Dragons are all $25. That's all basic information that you guys, if you're watching this out of order, if I don't mention MSRP, it's because all five of them are $25 each. As I remove the cellophane, from this beautiful cigar. Ooh. Ooh. It actually has a little salt. I feel like the wrapper has a little spice to it. The wrapper has a little earthiness to it. And that's about it. It's earthy. The foot is more woodsy. Ooh, a little spice on the foot. Ooh, yeah, a little, a little spice on the foot. Yeah. Earthy wrapper, woodsy foot. Before I even perform the circumcision, let's take a look at the cigar. And go over the dimensions and background of the cigar. So first you have the wrapper. The wrap you see right there is a Honduras Corojo. And apparently I had to look it up because I don't know what I never actually seen that before. But the wrap is from Hamad Stran. Haman Stran. And that's with a J. J-M-A-S-T-R-A-N. If you're from a Spanish background, anything with J's is replaced with an H when it comes to pronunciation. You don't say Josie, you say Jose. The Spanish version of you know, Jesus is Jesus. Everything with J is, pr is pronounced with an H in Spanish. So Hamansran is where the origins of this rapper comes from. Everything else is also Honduran. So this is basically almost a Honduran puro. I'm not sure the binder and filler also come from Hamansran, but this is a Honduras cigar. It was rolled in Honduras, the binder is Honduras, the filler is Honduras, and the wrapper is also Honduras. This is also a Toro. This isn't the ridiculous size from the last two cigars, which was like six and five eighth. This is strictly a six and 52. No special weird numbers beside it. It is a hundred percent six by 52. I may have had Oscar Baladares cigars before. I may have not. This is my introduction to how they do cigars, but I'm getting an earthy wrapper and a woodsy foot with a slight little spiciness to the foot. Where's my, okay. It's time to perform circumcision. There you go, pop the bottle, Mazel tov. You now are 14, isn't that when they do their parties or 13 is when they become a man? Our mitzvahs, I grew up in public education. Okay, just off the rip, the resistance of the pull is there. It's not like a straw, it's definitely tightly packed. This is more of an actual chocolate, more dark chocolate, specifically like sea salt, dark chocolate. There's a few chocolates out there you actually put sea salt in. This is like a sea salt chocolate just from the cold draw. With a slight earth undertone. It's like you got a sea salt chocolate ice cream and you dropped it on dirt and then you picked it back up and just ate it. 
that's what this is so far. Let's get into the ignition. Not talking about R. Kelly. First of all, let me just be smart. I was doing reactions. Now I can hear myself. Wait, oh, I can hear myself way better now. Ooh, that was gorgeous. Let's light this bad boy up. Yep, that should be good. Ooh. Very meaty. Yeah, very me like, like a tender, like a tender beef. I was not expecting that. Yeah, it gives me like the feeling that I'm eating a burger or like a steak. A very dab of spice. You have this meatiness to it. Could be mushroom. But there's definitely a, a tender feeling to it, like a type of style of beef, either burger wise or steak wise. Also salty. So it's almost like. This is the entree you're picking. You go to a Ruth Chris. You order yourself a steak on a side. You have mushrooms. That's what it is. And you just sprinkle salt on the steak. That's what I'm getting so far. All right, the spice is now dwindling. Okay, now it's changing a little bit. How did... Yeah, now it's transitioning into... I feel like I'm like around the marshlands, like a swamp. It's getting more earthy. I don't, I'm not getting that chocolate I was getting from the cold draw. That's weird. So this is different than the other three I smoked. What I'm talking about is this actually leaves a little bit of a aftertaste, but it's not really on the aftertaste on your tongue or on your lips, but on the roof of your mouth. It's like a taste I'm constantly getting because obviously when I'm talking and trying to formulate whatever, I feel like when I slap my tongue on the roof of my mouth I can taste the cigar again or obviously when I swallow my saliva sometimes people swallow the saliva by guiding the saliva down your throat this is like extremely either TMI or unnecessary filler words to make the video longer but whenever I do that action to guide the salvation that is formulated through mouth the point I'm trying to make, the taste resides at the top of your mouth instead of being on your lips or on your tongue, which is weird. Okay, now the chocolate is slowly coming in. This is a weird first third. This is a very weird first third because I'm not even done or close to the first they're being done and I already had like through transition sort of real meeting then it transformed into this swampy dirty earth and then now the chocolate is slowly coming in and this is like what 20 puffs in maybe less than that
even though yes, I took a long hiatus from uploading videos, I still read all my comments. So I'm not too sure what's typical in Oscar's blends with cigars. Sometimes certain companies, they're known for stuff. Like for example, Espinosa's are known for spicy cigars. Davidoff's are known for being complex. So they have like the dry fruits, they have espresso, they have different varieties in the first, second, and you know, last third. But again, Davidoff's are known for being a little more complex cigars. Padrones are known for their coffee, espresso, chocolate flavor notes to their cigars. A lot of these brands kind of have their insignia or their signatures when it comes to the blends. It may not be every single line, but typically they have almost a base when it comes to their brands and lines of cigars. For those who are a fan of Oscar cigars, I don't think I have much or maybe I haven't had any. Educate me in the comment section. How many cigar lines do he have? What is the most typical notes you tend to get from his cigar lines? Before I skip to the second, third, I just want to say so far what I'm getting is just chocolate that was dipped in mud. It's not terrible, but it's not like, I don't think it's collaborating well at the moment for the first third. Like I'm fine with earthiness, but it kind of throws my palate off guard when you put a little sweetness to it, but then you have earth that overpowers it. That very initial meanness was nice very nice but now that i'm getting more deeper into the cigar it's just like chocolate dipped in dirt and mud and swamp it may sound off-putting when i put this combination like into a plate <laughs> uh, you know how reese's they do their whole thing where they put like chips like potato chips into their reese's or they put pretzels or you know, Reese's Pieces, they put like stuff in their peanut butter cups. Think about getting a dark Hershey, right? And instead of almonds, you put mushrooms. That's what I'm getting. With that note, I'm going to see you guys in a second third. So I smoked a little bit into the second third. And, you know, I want to unpause the recording when something like really changed. I didn't really didn't change much. It's just still that swampy, earthy cigar. Again, there's nothing wrong with having an earthy cigar. People love it. There's a whole fandom behind the whole element of Amazon basins. And that is just dirt in a cigar. That type of dirt was kind of quite nice because it reminded me of the petrichor, which is when it rains after a very dry season, that earthy aroma you get in the air. That's what the Amazon basin is about. And that's what I get from it. But this is literally just mud with tads of notes here and there. But nothing really changed. I still get this somewhat beefy taste to it, but then it kind of goes away to just earth. Right now I'm experiencing a little bit of a canoe, but I have a feeling that it'll fix itself. Not too sure how the quality of Oscar cigars typically are but I just looking at the cigar itself I could see that it could potentially fix itself the cigar is mostly gray with a little bit of shades of white at the I guess the ring of the wrapper there's a very slight sweetness to it I guess that chocolate note I was getting from in the beginning kind of chimes in here and there this is just an earth bomb of cigar. And not really much differences in the second third. This is like more straightforward to just earth and a little bit of the saltiness and a 
meatiness. That's just the whole premise of the cigar so far. Getting close to the last third, so I guess I'll see you guys at that last third. So I'm at this point of the cigar. I'm entering the last third. It's just consistent. It's just earth. That's all I'm really getting from the cigar, earth. And then every so often you get a little bit of woodsy, a little bit of chocolate, but the most overpowering aspect and element of the cigar is just earth. <sighs> For $25, typically this is the last cigar to be coming out in this in individual boxes. Each of the cigars that was featured in this box behind me are all, all have different release dates. The original Year of the Dragon was released first. Then it's AJ Fernandez, EPC, Oliva, Vasily, Oscar. And you have that typical saying, leave the best for last. And this element, I don't think this is the best one. The first one so far is the one that stands out the most for me. That Gurkha with La Artista, that was, blew me out of the waters. It blew me out of the waters. This one's a little bit more on the, I wouldn't want to get another one. With that in mind, let's just get into the rating system. I, I think I smoke more than enough to know what this cigar is. So let's get into the whole element that I typically do which is the band. We have the band. You have this almost topaz yellow. The yellow seems fine, but the combination of that yellow, gold, and black almost reminds me like a yellow jacket, like a wasp or a bumblebee. So I kind of thought it's going to be you no know, strong because you don't fuck with wasps. Wasps are near you. You run away. If a yellow jacket near you, you run away. If a bee's around, you run away because they have a stinger. So I'm thinking about, okay, bumblebee colors. You know, it's going to sting you with flavors. It's going to give you a lot of stuff. But it actually stung my heart. This is more about the appearance. The appearance of the band is nice. The Toro, the actual rapper, held up perfectly well. Now, I did not relight the cigar at all. And it fixed itself. Had a canoe briefly, but it fixed itself. Now the ash is mostly white with a hint of gray. I'll give it a seven. It's, it's all right. Right. The band, it was a beautiful yellow. So I'll give the appearance a seven construction, but there was a little bit of a tight pull when it comes to the actual puff compared to the figure I smoked yesterday and then the other cigars with the other day. This had a little bit more resistance, but it was a nice amount of resistance. It wasn't bad. It's just, it was just right. It's the whole element of the Goldilocks. This is too hot, too cold, and just right. The resistance was just right. Same thing. I give it a seven. Had that little resistance. It did, it did canoe for a little bit. It did fix itself, which I do give it credit. But for the fact that canoe happened, eh, and the just right resistance, I do prefer cigars that has no resistance at all. So it's easier and faster to smoke. But that is a coin thing. If you do have a little more time in your hand, you do want to smoke a little bit longer with a cigar that has a little bit more resistance. It burns slower. This cigar review took me a little bit longer than usual because of the slow burn and this kind of tight resistance. So that's not a bad thing. That's not truly a bad thing. It's not really my cup of tea. I just prefer cigars that has a more better and more fluent draw. But with that being said, the construction, I'm gonna give it a seven. With the taste notes, that first one eighth was amazing. It, it just hits you with that meatiness, that mushroom, a little bit of chocolate, saltiness. It was amazing for that first eighth. Then it just dulled down and just gave you just dirt and earth with tads of bits of that meatiness, tads a bit of a little bit of oakiness. That's all I really got from the cigar. It's just earth. 
And it's not really like a memorable Earth like I had with the Amazon Basin. This is just Earth. Wet mud Earth. So all honestly, I'm gonna give the taste note a three. It really didn't hit it for me. And it's not something I would like to smoke often. If it's handed to me, why not? I could probably have it. I'll probably have it combined with a, I don't know, a coffee or some type of whiskey. But on its own, it's not truly that enjoyable. So I'm going to give it a three. And after doing the math, this cigar lands at a 4.7. Not going to round it up to make it a pass. I'm just, just going to trash it. It was not much of an amazing experience. It was not really much of an enjoyable cigar. It just felt dragging. And I wanted the video. I just wanted the review to be done with. Since it's such a slow burn, it was kind of not really torturous, but really not something I en truly enjoyed. So with that being said, this cigar is a trash. Form your own opinions on it, but this was a miss for me. Hope you guys enjoyed my review of Gurkha and Oscar Valadares. You're the dragon. Until next time, I love your faces and I'm out. Peace.